Hey there, YouTube people. I'm Ethan, and welcome to episode two of my startup series. Watching me grow a startup, I think that's what I called it the last time. The marketing plan. Watch me grow a business step by step from zero to seven or eight figures, learn exactly what I'm doing and why, and then you get to see it manifest before your eyes. So last time we were looking at the Lean Canvas, the one page business plan and a brand strategy. Last time I said we were gonna be looking at growing and starting on social media, but I think it was better for us to do the marketing plan first, because otherwise it's kind of like, you know, the saying, putting the cart before the horse. And that would definitely be it in this case. So we will be doing the marketing plan in this episode. Okay, so the marketing plan. Gonna, gonna put up on the whiteboard for you, general overview of what we're gonna be doing. The specifics will be done at uh, different stages throughout it. Our big general plan. And you want it to be somewhat adaptable. You know, we don't need anything hard fixed in. You know, you need to leave room for flexibility as things develop over time. Uh, but this is the general idea of what we will be doing. So the first part we're gonna look at is what we call or what I'm calling discovery. How are people gonna be finding out about us? Okay, and this is really gonna be then split up into several different sections, but mainly we're gonna be using social media because that's content is king these days. And so we're gonna be pushing out a huge amount of content, building the brand around social media. That's why I was gonna do that first, but you know, we'll stick with the general plan first and then break it down into that social media. And the main ones that we're gonna be focusing after at the beginning are gonna be Instagram, TikTok, and then YouTube and then Twitter. So we're gonna be using those four. We will probably use other ones as well as we go along and develop. But it is important to use native content for each of the different uh, platforms. We're not just gonna be reposting. Obviously, we'll, I'll also do Facebook and Facebook only just repost because Facebook's basically dead. But for all the rest of them, you know, I'm not gonna be just posting my Instagram content on TikTok. I'll make native content for each platform and then branch out that way. And I will be using uh, both promotions and organic growth on these platforms. Part of the, the plan will be to have a mascot which can appear across all channels of the main face of the brand. And then through which we'll, we will push out loads of value, loads of emotional and logical value for individuals around what the brand is. So push out value in each post. 80% will just be pushing out value and then 20% will be like promoting our own products. New competitions, not just those, like you've seen my other videos about doing this, not, not just a crappy like, share, follow for competition, you know, a competition that celebrates the fans and the audience and the people that are engaging with it. So you celebrate them in some sort of way, get them to enter in to do something awesome that celebrates the brand and then that's how they enter into the competition. I've got more details about that in one of my marketing videos and five more advanced marketing tips for social media. Check that video out. And then you need to be making sure across all of your marketing actually. So we're gonna put that in here. One, empower people with whatever your brand is trying to do, whatever, whatever you're trying to give to people, what your reason, your purpose, it's not just to sell a product. What you're trying to give to people, the value you're trying to deliver, make sure you're empowering that within them. And then number two, you need to make sure you delight. Make them feel good. Give them, you know, extra little things that just, you know, moments of delight everywhere and anywhere. You know, it has to be surprised. It cannot be expecting it. Otherwise it's not delightful and it's just joy. And that's okay too, but you want to be focusing on moments of delight because that has a higher level of emotional tension to release uh, because they're not expecting it. It's a surprise. Whereas if they are expecting it, the emotional uh, contrast is lower. Uh, it's still powerful, but not as powerful as when you have high emotional contrast. So that's why delight comes in. And so for each section of your marketing plan, you want to be making sure you're adding in empowerment and delight. Well, that's mine. You don't have to do that. I'm just saying, that's what I'm doing. This isn't supposed to be me teaching you. This is just what I'm doing. So I'm just going to take a wee little break here, a little breather, because just throwing a load of details at you, and that can get a very bit boring. So just take a, just take a moment, a breath, and then we'll get right back into it. The next step is going to be uh, driving people from here to our website and then I will be trying to drive them into an email list and then we will be adding value through our email marketing as well. And so you capture people in multiple different places. So from the social places, we drive them to our website and then just stick them in an email list. And this will be the first couple of months. We're not even going to be pushing a product until we have an audience and then we will launch a product into the existing audience for the brand. So website into email and we'll be doing weekly emails once the list is started to grow, maybe the first month or so. We won't do any emails and then the next month we'll start amping up. Probably a weekly plus another email, random surprise, a moment of delight email as well. So we're going to have the design of the product and this is very important for uh, marketing. Like you can really uh, leverage your design to play into your brand, especially if we can for word of mouth. And that's, that's going to be a massive strategy for me. You guys know I am a big fan of word of mouth. Marketing is probably my favorite type ever. We want to leverage word of mouth with our marketing campaigns. That means we need to create something that is worth talking about worth remarking 
And more than that, it's so the purpose of it is to get another person to ask that person about that product. And so your product needs to be gain remarks from other people, and then that gives permission for the other people, for the person to share the story of your brand, and then it spreads through word of mouth. Very much like what Tom's did. Those shoes are very remarkable, they look ugly, they look distinct, and people comment on them, and then the brand of Tom's was shared through word of mouth because people commented on the shoes and then the other person got to tell the story. They didn't talk about the type of shoe and the features of the shoe. All they said was, it's one for one, you know, and shared Tom's story about helping children without shoes. So very powerful. We're gonna try and leverage something along those lines here. It won't be exactly the same because we're not doing a one for one or whatever, but it's more about this. In the story of the brand being shared and we're gonna leverage it. That's why all of this content here and driving the people to really believe that story, we allow them and give them permission with our design to tell a story. So permission for word of mouth. So how do you make it uh, remarkable? It has to be bold, it has to make a statement, and it has to align with your brand, bold and remarkable. And the next part I'm also going to leverage into this, especially with this delight factor, is the unboxing experience. Everybody talks about the unboxing and making it look cool. It's less about making it look cool and more about delivering for in them a really amazing experience. It could look like, it could be like a cardboard box, but they are always cardboard boxes. Like I mean, but it doesn't have to look cool. It has to deliver them a moment of delight. And really what I want to do with it is to reinforce their beliefs. So by getting them to do something with this unboxing experience, something unique and something delightful, but it should reinforce their beliefs. They should have to take an action that reinforces the beliefs of what the brand is about. And so they step further into committing to your brand and who they stand for and, and committing their identity essentially into their brand, into your brand, reinforcing beliefs. And then over here, we're gonna have this extra special thing and we're gonna have a very exclusive app for, I mean, lots of brands now have apps for they, uh, they themselves. But we're gonna create our own special app. What will happen within it is people will step by step be reinforced into this belief and to and, and, and further empowered and the deeper they go the more empowered they become and so it will be a journey an experience uh, that they will go through over multiple interactions with the app and by the end of it uh, they should be fully reinforced and fully empowered through the brand and obviously the product would work without the app i'm not saying that has to use the app what i'm saying is it will be an extra thing an extra special thing for you know a small percentage maybe 10 20 30 percent hopefully around that 20 to 30 will be ideal that use this app and, and push it further and push their beliefs into this brand further you know fully cementing their identity into this brand so as you can see we go around here we start here and it comes down like this and then through here and into these two which is then the product and design. And you'll notice that I haven't really talked about advertisement, nor have I really talked about the product. Yes, we did talk a bit about the product, but that's a very minor faction. Less about the functionality of the product and more about what the product represents within the whole brand and its function in the marketing plan. It's less about what the product does and more about how it serves this journey of empowerment for the individual. So, but we will be having some adverts in there too, but most of the ads push them into here. We will do some retargeting to push them into the website uh, and then into a sales pitch, uh, but we will only be doing that on retargeted people. We won't be doing any cold leads into buying the product. Everything will come from warm leads into buying the product. Then we will do retargeting ads, probably actually just exclusively from the website. We get just people, loads of people into uh, interacting and getting into this journey of content, of interacting with the content, of empowerment, of delight, of becoming somebody who believes the same things that our brand believes. And then once we have a load of people in there interacting with us, then we serve them a product and be like, hey, buy a product. And then a handful of those people will sign up to want to buy the product. And then we deliver and make a product for them. So we will be doing pre-sales obviously to uh, lower the upfront costs. And so we'll get some of them to pre-sale and then we make a product for them and then we deliver those products to those people eventually. And we can also sell other things around it as well. It doesn't just have to be the one product. Well, first of all, we'll have upsells and stuff in there. But I mean, just generally, we can sell almost any product in there. It doesn't really matter what the product is, is we can sell almost anything. It just has to represent the brand. But we'll probably be doing other merch as around and surrounding it and get some cash flow coming in. So the goal would be probably on this front for the social media to push to about 10 million followers in the two year period. 10 million followers across all channels in a two year period, which Probably seems about reasonable, I think. Well, next week, we will be looking at the social media strategies, the content plan for them, and the email plan as well, and how we're going to drive people from social media into the site and the general, and more, or actually the more specific plans for those, and actually starting to deliver and execute on creating that content. Remember, marketing is a relationship. Add value to them, build trust based upon your own shared beliefs, and then build a tribe.